and welcome back to another video in this video we're going to pick up from the last one we're going to be doing part two of the ai avoidance and with that let's get into this so much like the last video this video method comes from the youtuber math b i will leave a link to his youtube channel in the description so with that let's get started uh, before we get started there is something i forgot to do in the previous video so like i said the by creating a child blueprint the child then inherits the properties from the parent that includes any supporting blueprints so that would include for the sports car the blueprints that handle the wheels so since we don't want the players car in the AI to handle the exact same way we're gonna create well not create but we're gonna duplicate the blueprints from the sports car and then just modify them for the AI bus. so let's do that real quick before we get started with this video so we're gonna head over to the sports car blueprint and then the two blueprints for the wheels select both right click and then say duplicate so now we've duplicated them you can just select each one and then rename and then just say ai underscore sports car do the same for the other one f2 ai underscore sports car and then just reselect those two and then move them over to the ai folder and then the ai folder will open up the sports car child blueprint and then in here we're gonna go down in the components panel click on the vehicle movement component and then where the wheel setup is we are going to expand the wheel setup index and then just select the duplicated blueprints so where it says sports car wheels front we're gonna select the ai version of that we're gonna do the same for each wheel the front first and then we're gonna do the rear so with that that is complete now let's get into today's video so we're gonna create a new function we're gonna call this avoidance and then from here we are going to drag in the vehicle movement component hold control drag it in and then we're gonna drag off from there and say get forward speed and since for the tutorial series we are using kilometers an hour we need to convert the case forward speed to kilometers so from the return value drag off and look for a multiply and then the multiply value will be 0.036 so with this it will then um, multiply whatever value comes out here by this value by the multiply and then that will give you the kilometers an hour so from here drag off in the multiplier and then look for a map range clamped the in range a value will be zero the in range b value will be 300 and then the values for the out a and out b will be determined by the steer prediction so drag in the variable we created in the previous video drag off from the prediction look for a multiply set the multiply value to two and then connect the multiplier to the out B value and then connect the steer prediction straight into the out A value. So from here, we're just gonna select everything created thus far, drag it down a bit, and then we're gonna right click just above that and then look for get actor location as well as right click and then look for a get actor forward vector. Let's just make a little bit of space from the get actor forward vector we're going to drag off and look for a multiply and then we're going to connect the return value from the map range clamped and connect that to the bottom pin at the newly created multiply and then we're going to drag off from the get actor location and look for an add and then we're going to connect the multiply to the bottom pin at the add and then we're going to drag off from the avoidance node and look for a capsule trace for objects and then we are going to use the get actor location as the start and then from the add that will be the end the radius value will be 500 from the object types drive off 
and look for a make array so then this make array will determine all the vehicles that it needs to check for so the vehicles you want the uh, i'm just going to check for is vehicle and then from the access to ignore drag off there and then say make array and then from the pin that has a zero next to it drag off and then look for self so you're making reference to ourself and then at the debug draw type you could set this to none but we want to see if the code actually works so we're gonna click on that and then say for one frame and then from the capital trace for objects return value drag off and then look for a branch node and then from the on hit drag off and then look for break hit result expand that and then from the branch node the true and false we are going to create a new variable we're going to call this offset of type float and then we're going to hold alt drag it into the scene connect from the branch node the false to the set offset and then we're going to copy and paste a different version of the offset and then we're going to connect that to the true and then the one that's connected to the true we're just going to drag it out we're going to use that later so from the break hit result from the hit actor we're going to drag off and look for get actor location and then just above that we're going to look for a get actor transform and then from the get actor transform we're going to drag off and then say find relative look at rotation connect the get actor location connected to the hit actor and connect that to the target location then we're gonna well, on the return value right click and then say split strut pin and then from the z we're gonna drag off and look for a map range clamped the values here will be 0.01 90 negative 500 and negative 250 oh uh, one thing i forgot to add between the find relative look at rotation and the map range clamp we need to add an absolute float and then connect from the absolute float to the map range clamp um, sorry about that that was my mistake and then from the absolute float we're going to drag off again and then look for another map range clamp the values for this one is going to be 90 160 negative 275 and then negative 50 and then we're also going to drag off once again from the absolute float and then look for a lesser than and then the value there will be 90 if you want to know how the offset um, function works you can check out Matthew's video he goes into great depth as to what each aspect of the code does uh, this is merely a recreation of his code and then from the lesser than we're gonna drag off and look for a select scroll down and then the third last from the bottom I'm gonna select that one so then the middle the bottom map range clamp will be connected to the true and then the top rep map range clamp will be connected to the false and then from the return value by the select we're gonna drag off and look for a multiply so now we're gonna do the next bit of code from the z by the find relative look at rotation drag off and look for a sign float and then from the sign float return value connect that to the multiply and then from the get actor location connected to the hit actor by the break hit result drag off and then look for a distance vector and then for the distance vector we are going to find the second value by dragging from the get actor transform and then looking for searching for break transform and then we're going to drag from the location and then add that to the second value by the distance vector from the distance vector we are going to drag off the return value look for a map range clamped we're going to drag in the steer prediction again hold control drag it in drag off once again look for a multiply set the multiply value to two and then connect the multiply to the in range b 
to the prediction to the in range A. And then the out range A and out range B values will be 1.5 for the A and 1 for the B. And then from the multiplier created earlier, drag off and then look for another multiplier and then connect the map range return value to the multiplier. So I'm just going to drag this over a bit, make everything look a bit nicer. And then from the hit actor by the break hit result, drag off and then look for a get velocity and then below that right click and then look for get velocity and then from the get velocity either either one of the get velocity drag off and then look for a vector length control c control d and then connect that to the other get velocity and then from the top vector length drag off and look for a subtract connect the bottom vector length to the subtract from the subtract drag off and then look for an absolute float from the absolute float drag off and then look for a map range clamped once again drag in the steer prediction connect the steer prediction to the in range a drag off from the steer prediction look for a multiply set the multiply value to 2 connect the multiply to the in range b and then the out range a and b values will be negative but not negative 0 0.03 for the a and then one for the b and then from the multiply the second multiply we create a drive off and then look for another multiply and then connect the map range clamp to that multiply and then from the last multiply drag off and then connect that to the offset that's connected to the true from the branch node we created earlier so then that is the entirety of the recreated avoidance code from the youtuber matt b so we're going to compile and save and go see if the code works uh, head over to the event graph and then between the set throttle input and the steering drag in the newly created avoidance function. Compile and save. And then in the level, what we're gonna do to test this out is we are going to drag in a copy of the sports car. Time for sports car, just drag in the sports car. And then if you simulate the level, then the sports car that was dragged in is just gonna sit there as though it's a prop. So we're gonna save all. Sorry. Uh, one thing I forgot to add in the steering function at the end, before the get location at distance along spline, create a new redirect node, drag off from that new create redirect node and then look for get right vector at distance along spline and then the distance value will be the select float the coordinate space will be left to local and then we're just going to drag everything after that out a bit from the get right vector drag off from the return value and then look for a multiply and then the bottom pin of the multiplier will then be for the offset so hold control drag in the offset variable connect that to the bottom pin and then from the get location at distance along spline drag off and look for an add connect the multiply to the add and then from the add connect that to the target location so then that is everything that's the last part that i forgot to to add from the code compile and save and then i'm just gonna move the sports car over a bit just to see if the code works save all this detected it makes contact with the car so if you still have um, so if the AI is making contact with the car, there could be a couple of things. Firstly, it could be because of the lack of traction on the wheels because it was referencing the 
um, blueprints from the sports car, which the veils never change. So we can check by doing that first. Um, change the cornering stiffness to 1500, the friction force to 4.5, and then do the same for the other blueprint. This will give the AI a lot more traction on the road. And then the other thing we can check, um, check is if we increase the speed, because maybe the AI yeah, isn't going fast enough to actually make the turn. And we're going to set the throttle to one and then see if that maybe helps. So let's run this again. So it detects, moves out the way, and then comes back. So we can see that the avoidance system does indeed work. So now there is something that I would like to test out as well as an extra and as, as an added bonus if I put the car here. So I'm placing the sports car vehicle more or less on the AI spline that the AI uses to drive and then what we're going to do is we're going to create a extra function uh, this function we're going to rename this to adjust prediction so what this function is going to do is um, lengthen or shorten the prediction based on how fast the car is going. So to do that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna drag in the vehicle movement component, look for drag off from the movement component and then it will get forward speed. And then from the return value, we're gonna multiply the out value by 0 0.036 so we can get kilometers. And then from the multiplier, we're going to drag off and look for a map range clamped. So what we're going to do is in the A, we're going to leave it at zero. In the B, we're going to turn this up to 300. So it's from zero to 300 kilometers. What we would then like is for you to have a minimum of a thousand and probably a maximum of maybe 4,000. And then we are going to drag in the steer prediction, hold alt drag it in and then set that to the prediction value and then connect the execution pin compile head over to the event graph and then before the avoidance drag off and then set the adjust prediction so we're going to leave the value at one save save all and then see if the code works as I would like it to simulate the level okay it expands forward and the car is simply going too fast to make the full turn but the code works as intended the idea behind it is that as the car goes faster the steer prediction expands giving it more time to avoid any cars that would be in front of it so that is the idea behind it. And as we saw before, the code does indeed work. I would I would have preferred if it could actually avoid the car, but it did attempt to avoid the car. So to some degree, the code does then work. It just doesn't turn fast enough to make the full, um, to be able to fully avoid the stationary sports but the the code works everything is fine so with that that brings us to the end of this video and until the next one